could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. Birds will sing about your heart Maybe the trees will whisper the word Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope Welcome to the Wooly Wolverine podcast. My name is Laura and I am the host. Today is the 3rd of January, so Happy New Year to everyone who's watching this. Um, it is 2021. We made it through 2020, guys. It's it's an achievement. I just wanted to say uh, welcome to all new viewers who may have found me through my Vlogmas videos. These videos are slightly different. It's kind of just where I go through my progress of my projects and just talk about whatever kind of crafty piece of work I'm working on at the moment. I am pretty happy that I managed to actually do, I think, 22 days of Vlogmas. Some of the days became two days. Some days I just didn't feel like it because there wasn't much going on because I was trapped basically in this bedroom. But it was lovely to talk to you guys and just let you in on my everyday life. So if that was something you enjoyed, thank you very, very much for watching. And if it wasn't something that you were particularly interested in, this format might suit you better. So that's all good. Um, As I said, my name is Laura. Uh, for new viewers who do not know me, I live in Kildare in Ireland with my family. So I live still home with my parents and my two sisters. I have two cats and if you are a fan of cats, if you watch my Vlogmas videos, you'll see them featuring very heavily. <laughs> um, so I have a good bit of stuff to show today. It's been about a month since I podcast because I took a break while I was doing Vlogmas and for people who may have watched before, I have a finished object. Do, do, do. Uh, so this was kind of in progress before um, on my last uh, podcast. So I'm going to stand up and do a little twirl. So this is my Tecumseh by Caitlin Hunter or Boylan Networks and um, just a note any projects I talk about I will have links down below in the description box so if you need any more information it will be there. So this is my Tecumseh. It is a D DK weight sweater. It's kind of like a poncho and um, so it's quite oversized. I did give a good bit of detail in terms uh, of previous episodes in terms of why I chose to knit a smaller size than what was kind of given in the pattern. It usually allows for a lot more positive ease. This still has a lot of positive ease, but it's not, I think they recommended nearly 10 inches and I went for four maybe um, at a push. But yeah, I adore this sweater. It's so warm and cozy. So the yarn, I'm a big fan of this yarn now. So this is Rauma. Uh, Strick Garn, I believe. And I this is a kind of, a, it looks very black on the camera, but it's actually a charcoal gray. Um, and yeah, so I matched that with this lighter gray, which also kind of looks white or cream on this camera, but it is a gray and then pink. And I really love a dark colored sweater. I knit a lot of pastel colors. If you watch the podcast, you will know. And this was something a bit different. So I got this yarn at Edinburgh uh, Yarn Festival in 2018 or 2019. I'm not sure which year it was, 2019. Yes, 2019. And yeah, I really love it. So the yarn, when I blocked it or washed and blocked it, bloomed beautifully. It's quite rustic wool. Um, I'm not wearing anything underneath this and I don't find it scratchy. Um, after I washed it, it does soften up a lot um, as you work with it and as you wash it. I was left with the tiniest, tiniest nugget of this grey colour, the light grey. So it was very much yarn chicken. Um, I did knit my sleeves two at a time, so um, I had to make a call kind of when I got to the last repeat here if I was going to be brave enough to attempt the colour work. 
and I just about made it. Um, but I love it. I love the length. Um, it's quite, it just hits me kind of just, just kind of uh, below hip length. Um, now, the one thing, it is kind of drop sh shoulder. So if you lift your sleeves up, you will see my belly button. Um, but yeah, I really love it. And so cozy. So that is my finished object number one. I finished it, I think, before the start of December. Um, I did show it in the Vlogmas, so if you have watched that, you will have seen that. So next project that I was working on um, is a half finished object. It is the Chanterelle socks by uh, Danielle George or Little Bobbins. She is known. Ignore these ends. I'll tuck them in so you can see them a bit better. Um, so these are um, a very simple patterned sock. It's just a ribbed sock with this lovely little ruffle. So um, yeah, I think, so this marker here is by Hannah of the Corner of Craft. And this is where I was actually the last time I podcast. And this one here is where I picked up yesterday to knit on. So I knit the whole heel and foot um, yesterday. Uh, it was my knitting of choice. I thought I'd better make a bit of a dent in it because I was going to podcast today. And I just really enjoyed knitting uh, the sock. So I need to cast on the second one, but I think these will be so cute with my Doc Martens. Just the ruffle peeping up over the top is going to be absolutely adorable. Love these. So this yarn is the Moon and Sixpence in the colorway Logwood. And I believe it is naturally dyed. Um, and this, the frill is made out of mohair. And this is Lilith by Fine Fish Yarns. Isn't it gorgeous? So yeah, that are, so I need to cast on the second one um, and then I'll have a nice pair. So yes, they are the two projects that I was kind of working on before December or in the last podcast. Um, then December came along and the project I mainly focused on was my Advent project. So if you watch Vlogmas, you will know. But the uh, the Advent project I decided to work on was the Pinwheel Scrap Blanket by Mina Phillip or the Knitting Expat. Expat. And I was using the yarn from my homespun house advent calendar, my Giddy Yarns advent calendar, and I did a swap as well of advent calendars with um, the lovely Caroline, which was organised by Lay Family Yarns. And yeah, so I've gotten a nice little stack of squares. I did, I kept quite up to date with it. So I have nine squares in total. So I could make a small like three by three type blanket, but I think I have some leftovers from my last year's advent calendars from Stress Knits and uh, Sweet Sparrow. So I'm going to add a couple more squares there and then see what I want to do um, in terms of how big I want it. But these are so cute and they're so nice in a pile. They're so squishy, like a little blanket uh, or not a blanket, like a cushion. But like, yeah, I just want to lie on them. But yeah, no, I've so I've nine done. So they're, I originally was planning on kind of matching kind of pastel colors together. So this was the first one I knit, but then the second one, I kind of just picked up what was kind of coming out or what I wrote, and I just really liked how kind of playful it was. And uh, I just really love the bright pops with the pastels as well. This square is like a nice rainbow. I love this one. Um, and yeah, so I've nine lovely squares, which I adore. So yeah, I'm going to um, continue on with um, using the minis that I had from leftover um, advents last year and see how far I get in terms of squares then and then kind of figure out what size I want to make it. I am going to do some sort of border on the edge as well to kind of make it a bit bigger and I could do a border around each square to kind of frame them but I haven't quite made up my mind as to how I'm going to stick them together 
Um, but the, 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 the I can't recommend the pattern enough. It's really addictive. You just want to kind of keep going around and adding equal triangles. And yeah, this was, uh, I, I'm just in a blanket phase as well, which you'll see in a moment also. So I currently have four blankets on the go. So one of my, <laughs> one of my uh, resolutions for the year is to try and get at least one or two of them blankets done. I showed my um, granny stripe blanket in the vlog. I'll link that up here somewhere um, if I can figure out how to do that. So you can see the kind of progress on that one if you want. I showed my northeasterly recently enough, so I haven't made much of a dent on that since. But I did also start another blanket, which is in this gorgeous um, bag by my college number nine, these beautiful robins. And yeah, it's a drawstring bag with the handles and it's gorgeous. Really wintry, but not too Christmassy, which is good. Um, so yeah, I have these in a little, so this was a, a macaroon um, box that I had and I'm knitting or crocheting actually Battenberg uh, or granny squares for the Battenberg blanket. Um, so I have like, 31 of these or 30 something of these little uh, squares in this little box lots of them so these are really quick and they're tiny so it's gonna you're gonna need many 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 of them um but they don't use up much yarn it's a nice way for your leftovers and the way the Battenberg look works is it's you know a solid color with these kind of um alternating as well so that's going to be a long-term project as well but it's very quick and easy to work these up and once you kind of figure out the the pattern uh you don't need to really think about it and it's um it's quite nice to do it while you're watching tv which i've done a lot of over christmas a lot of relaxing so these were all done in basically one day almost um while i was watching like harry potter i think on stage so that's my Battenberg. I have a, a bag full of little scraps um, because I have so many different blankets. I'm getting really using up my scraps. Um, another kind of adventy mini project that I have going on is, um, so if you watched Hannah of the Corner of Craft, she was knitting these tiny jumpers with her advent and um, I followed suit. So these are, leftovers from my giddy yarns um advent so i added them to my pinwheel blanket and then to make a tiny jumper so aren't these just so stinking cute so um during the december i was knitting these kind of as i had time or when i finished my um i have a few others that are there's another one i have a, like a bag full of little jumpers here um so yeah I was knitting them and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with them so they can be Christmas decorations um but I had a friend who moved into a house just early in December and I thought it might be nice to make her something for her house um so with that then it kind of you know got the the juices flowing and I made presents for a, all my my kind of group of friends who all um, own their own houses and I thought it might be nice to make them so I'm going to reach over and get this so one second so because of the way Christmas fell so my hair is all over the place um, I wasn't able to see all of my friends because of Covid so um, yeah so this is one of the, the frames that I made so what I did was I took the little jumpers and I duplicate stitched um, the initial of the recipient and their partner and I made a little bunting I just think they're so cute isn't it adorable um so I'm hopeful to get this to the owner I think I'll probably have to post it um to get it to her but uh, I just think it's really cute so it's good use for tiny jumpers so um I made this and my mother loved it so she wants one for her wall so I'm going to um, make one for her. 
so there's five of us so I need I think I have about five jumpers in that bag already knit um but yeah I just think there, it's a really nice idea for a present so I'll kind of save some up for Christmas decorations and then make some of these more frames for people too yeah I love it um I think they're really cute and something to use my skill for the world um yeah so they're all my kind of scrappy projects that are on the go lots of little bits and bobs being used up then it got around so that's kind of basically what I did for most of December was them kind of scrappy projects then it came to the end of the year and previously I had kind of talked about some of the sweaters that I wanted to cast on um there's a lot there <laughs> in my queue that I want to work on and I wound up some yarn to get going and then I didn't have the right needle size so I had to order that so I wasn't able to cast that on eventually I landed on it was New Year's Eve and I landed on I did talk about this one before but it is the Love Note by Tin Can Knits and I am using um this beautiful yarn by Ullen um who is Jess and she has her own mill and this gorgeous uh, mohair uh, by Sweet Sparrow and this is Interlude and this is what's this one called? Uh, Dusty Rose so I thought these would be really nice together and I cast this on um, on New Year's Eve as I said and I haven't worked on it since so um, as is the way but I'll get more to that in a moment um, but I adore this fabric. It is so cute and girly and I'm not going to be able to show it very well because it's like a little snake. But it's beautiful pinky haze and it's just so cute. I love it. So this is going to be the love note. So it's quite a lacy open gauge as well. Um, it's knit on a six millimeter needle, I think. Yeah, so it'll work up really fast, but I had to, it had to go on the back burner a little bit because of the next project, which I am going to show. Um, but yeah, this I adore and will be worked on throughout the month of January. So um, basically what I'm planning on doing is working on one jumper a month. So um trying to get a jumper out every month as well as one or two little bits in terms of socks or accessories, hats, cowls, that kind of thing, working on my blankets and uh, trying to get them. One of them finished off at least uh, this year. But so I've, so they were my resolutions was, you know, cast on a jumper at the start of each month and try and get it done within the month um, as well as working on them little bits but then I kind of broke my resolution straight away because I have two jumpers on the go and um, this one is a test knit and I need to check with Grace if it's actually okay if I share this um, but yeah she uh, Grace of Babbles Travelling Yarns is a fellow podcaster a fellow Irish podcaster and she has designed a beautiful jumper which she has shared before and um, called the Rosemary in Time and I am lucky enough to be one of her test knitters. So um, I, it's a DK weight um, jumper. I am using John Arbin Knit by Numbers, which um, she also used for hers. Um, I went with a different color palette to her one. Um, Grace is the queen of teals and blues and greens. And uh, mine is more um, me a little bit. So my base color is this gorgeous burgundy um really rich now this John Arbin I'd never used it before and I am converted this is the most gorgeous squishy yarn oh, it's beautiful like it is beautiful um if I had kept the ball bands handy that would have been good wouldn't it I'm not sure what number this is I think it might be 78 um but yeah isn't it beautiful it could be yeah I think it might be 78 so along with that I'm using so there's actually five colors in this jumper so I'm using um this which is number 76 
and number 72 I believe no this is 78 so I'd say this is 72 this is 76 and this is 78 so these ones um as my kind of um so as Grace uses a kind of cream I have this really light gray and this is number 12 and then for my pop I'm using this beautiful beautiful pink which is a kind of corally pink and it is number 23 so um I will share how far I've gotten um so it's a yoked sweater um and there's bits of ends everywhere I'm just trying to sort myself out talk about something amongst yourselves um so yeah it is a colorwork yoke and it is really pretty so here we are. This is as far as I've gotten. Oh, it looks so pretty on the camera. Um, so it's this kind of corrugated colorwork rib. It comes down, that's the back actually. So that's the kind of short row um, increases at the back. And these are lovely little flowers. Now, so mine isn't very high contrast between um my three kind of these three colors it's not a huge amount of contrast so it kind of just looks a bit fadey so this is kind of the really light one this is the mid and this is the dark or the main color it kind of fades back then um but yeah i start I, this i got this amount done in a day i really loved it I'm going to pick this up again today and keep working on the yoke. But this yarn feels amazing. I think this is going to be really, really pretty. <gasps> I love it. I'm so, so glad that I was able to test net for Grace as well. Because um, she's just an amazing person in the community. And uh, she is incredibly talented. And this is just beautiful. So I was really happy to be able to support her anyway I could um in terms of getting her first pattern out so I believe I don't I believe it's not due out until later in the year so March April time just to give everyone a bit of time to finish their test knit get everything you know sized and graded and updated and all that so um I think it will be later in the year, year but I will be keeping you up to date with that because um it's really pretty it's so purity oh my god it looks amazing So, um, hopefully I don't have to cut this out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that is all of my projects at the moment. There's a lot going on. Um, so yeah, I think I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who has watched my videos over the last few weeks as well and months. Um, after coming back, it's been really nice to get to connect with people again. Um, it's just yeah been a difficult kind of year so it's been good to be able to catch up with people um, and kind of share what I'm doing and getting really um, back interested in the fibre community again. Um, yeah so I think that's about it actually. I So my basically my New Year's resolutions is to knit a sweater a month, finish a blanket and that's it really at the moment. I do have a lot of single skeins that need to be used up so I will be looking at how I can use them in terms of jumpers and socks and other projects but yes um but yeah I think that's about it and I think I've shared enough of my everyday life in my vlogmas so um there's not much else going on since my last video it's been pretty quiet I had a nice quiet Christmas at home um uh, yeah it's just, it was a bit different this year but it was it was lovely it was relaxing I'm back to work tomorrow unfortunately and yeah I'm just ready to get started with the new year hope everyone is keeping really safe and happy and healthy and I will talk to you all again in two weeks time bye